Good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting us to present at OIS. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer of Advarium Biotechnologies. We're a Bay Area gene therapy company focusing on intravitreal gene delivery for large ocular diseases. And our lead program, Exovac, formerly known as ADVM022, is currently in phase two for the treatment of neovascular age-related macular degeneration. We are a public company, so those are more forward-looking statements. Our company is uh, on the NASDAQ stock market, trading currently below cash. We have $200 million of cash, uh, which uh, allows us to move our program forward. Um, we just recently presented the optic two-year data at the Retina Society. Um, and I will walk you through the, some of this data, which um, allows us to move forward in the phase two program. And our target market is the 20 million people globally that actually are affected with age-related macular degeneration, where the standard of care, while excellent, uh, has a lot of room for improvement. So we have actually an intravitreal capsid 7M8 that has been already established in the clinic with proof of concept, both in rare disease with our partner Gensites and in large indication with our own program with Exovec. And what we see is that our codon optimized a flibrocet encoding vector Exovec can actually produce therapeutic levels of a flibrocet out to three years as long as we've measured it. And what that does is it essentially translates in a 50% reduction, 50% of the patients who are completely free of injections and a greater than 80% reduction in the number of annual treatment injections. Uh, that really truly is transformative and has been recognized by the European Medicines Agency, who gave us prime designation, the equivalent of the US FDA breakthrough status, and is the foundation for the phase two LUNA study that's currently enrolling in the US and soon in Europe. So the treatment of wet AMD has made remarkable progress and the leading drug on the market, ILEA, uh, is, can maintain and improve vision in patients, but requires frequent injections. And in fact, according to the IRIS database that follows 3 million patients in the US, only 60% of the patients get sufficient injections in the eye, which is 8.8 .8 injections per year, one every 44 days. And in fact, in this $13 billion market, you can see that the recent approval of furosemab, which has, was approved earlier this year, already has captured 35% of the market based on the fact that this treatment interval can be extended by a few weeks. But what if we could actually provide a one and done treatment that would actually provide disease-modifying, lifelong benefits for these patients? And there are a few ways to do that. One of them is to provide, to implant a reservoir in the eye, and that has been done. It's the poor delivery system, which has been unfortunately pulled from the market temporarily and requires refills every six months. The other way is actually with gene therapy. The first generation of gene therapy was given subretinally, and that requires a surgery. It's very complex, works well for rare disease. Uh, improvements have been made in delivery with supracordial delivery, which actually requires fairly high doses of gene therapy, up to 2E12. But the only really way to scale up globally the treatment of wet AMD is actually with an intravitreal delivery, which fits well in the standard of care, also fits well in the the treatment paradigm of the retina practice, and has given the best efficacy to date with an acceptable safety profile when looked evaluated at doses of 211 and lower. So Carl Regillo just presented the optic data, the two-year end of the study at the Retina Society a few weeks ago, and the study was evaluating patients who were well-maintained, required frequent injections, and we evaluated two doses of Exovac, 6E11 and 2E11 with two short prophylactic courses of either oral steroids or topical steroids. The patients who completed the two year of the study had the option to continue for another three years for a total of five years follow up. You can see that these patients have been treated on average for four years since the beginning of their disease, some up to 10 years, and received annually close to 10 injections per year. And remember that number when you think about the impact this has on patients' lives. And you know, we can all hear stories about what happens when these patients have to go on vacation or miss the doses, but this is really a high treatment burden. So what we've seen actually in our study at two years is a greater than 90% reduction in annualized anti-VEGF at 6E11, 
And at 211, an greater than 80% reduction in annuals and TAVEGF, with more than half of the patients being free of injections. If we actually looked at the patients that had low levels of neutralizing antibody that can impact transductions, less than 1 over 125, you can see a greater than 90% reduction in annualized intervegep. Now, this graph shows actually the levels that we can measure in the eye starting at week 10. And the box with the two dotted bars show you what levels you can measure of flibrocept between four and six weeks after an early injection. And our target was to actually fill, target actually those levels on a stable manner for you know, the lifelong of the patients. And you can see that starting at 10 weeks, we can measure these levels, and each, every single patient we measure, they're completely stable after three years, and these post-mitotic cells are likely to express a flibrocept for the life of the patients. So the other thing that's quite interesting, other than the fact you can predict early on what will happen long-term, is that there's a very significant overlap between these two doses. In fact, if there were not colors to distinguish them, it would be hard to know which one of the high dose and the low dose, except on the upper and lower bounds. And that has translated into the goal of therapy in these patients is to maintain vision. Obviously, there's not treatment naive, they're very experienced patients. And as you can see, at two years, we can maintain vision at both two and 6E11. And we've seen a reduction in retinal thickness by about 60 to 90 micron in the two doses. This is after a single injection. So we also know that the fluctuation in macular fluid that results of these frequent bolus injections where the treatment wanes is associated with long-term vision loss. And there's more focus being put on that reduction in fluctuations and trying to stabilize the retina to preserve long-term vision. So I will give you two examples of patients that were in our study. Uh, this is a patient that was received 19 injections prior to enrolling into our optic study. That patient had nine injections in the year prior. You can see that that patient has significant amount of fluid despite those weak injections with a CST of about 600 microns. 12 weeks after the injection of Exovec, you can see that there's a reduction of CST of about 400 microns with a slight improvement in vision. This is sustained at one year and at two years with a 400 micron reduction in CST and almost uh, two, letter, two lines of uh, vision gain after two years. So that's really the potential and why we're pursuing these type of treatments. This is another example of a patient, slightly different way to look at the fluid volume with both the subretinal and intraretinal fluid in blue and in green. You can see that patient prior to treatment at several time points, head fluid that came up. And this is, you know, patient treated optimally in the top treatment centers, maintain vision. Nevertheless, there's fluid accumulating. You can see that after an injection of Ixovec 211 VG per I, this patient at one year has actually no fluid at all. The safety profile of Ixovec is manageable with actually a dose-dependent mild to moderate inflammation that is entirely responsive to topical steroids and has resolved in all patients at the 211 dose at the end of the study. We've seen no evidence of vasculitis, retinitis, vascular occlusion, or endophthalmitis and no clinically relevant changes in IOP in this patient population. And as you can see, there's actually a period of immune response that with a suboptimal prophylactic regimen can last up to six months or more. But those are minimal, non-symptomatic, that are man managed with, with eye drops. So we are currently enrolling the phase two study, our LUNU study, and we're evaluating two doses of Ixovac, the 211 dose that I just reviewed in the OPTIC trial, and a new lower dose of Exovac of 6E10. So this actually chart shows that we presented ASGCT shows actually all the data ever generated in non-human primates over three logs, a thousand fold. And you can see that there's a very flat dose response curve. It's been all, also entirely predictive what we've seen in patients. And we can actually lower the dose from 2E11 to 6E10 equivalent and see a completely flat dose response and as we all know, in gene therapy, dose is really what drives the immune response and the inflammation. So the hope is that we can find a dose that is optimal with an optimal prophylactic regimen that will actually lead to a very well-tolerated regimen that provides lifelong benefit, potentially lifelong benefit. This is a, the inflammation that we see in non-human primates that receive no prophylaxis. 
you can see in the bottom part at the 2E11 human equivalent, there's a peak immune response roughly between week four and week 12. That's when you want to cover the patients with prophylaxis. Actually, at the 6E10, there's virtually no inflammation except in one animal at three time points. So really, it's, it's about finding the right dose, the right prophylaxis to really optimize those treatments to make them scalable globally. So this is study design. We're evaluating similar patient populations optics. So the goal is to maintain vision. Those are heavily pretreated patients. We're looking at two doses, 2-11 and 6 10 and 72 patients. And we have an extended steroid prophylactic regimen with actually four arcs. And really the goal here was to understand the contribution of a systemic immune response to potential inflammation to the capsid administered in the eye, something that is not understood in the field. And so we are looking at either a steroid eye drop regimen of Durazol topical eye drops or an Ozodec individual implant that removes any potential patient compliance. And each one of these with the addition of systemic steroids. And this is a one-year study. We'll be measuring actually the 10, year, the 10 weeks of flibercept expression, as well as the efficacy and safety at an interim analysis at 26 weeks. I mentioned that we received prime designation. This is actually the first ocular gene therapy program that is not in a rare disease where there is a well-established standard of care. And this is really recognizing the unmet medical need and the potential for a long-acting anti-VEGF to have a significant impact on the treatment of wet AMD in Europe. So we're very pleased to work closely with EMA on finding ways to accelerate the development of Exovac to make this available as quickly and safely as possible to patients. And this is all about really freedom to be able to travel and explore these places. I had that dinner last night with a retina specialist who mentioned he was treating one, a, for, a former colleague of mine. And I texted her and I didn't hear from her, I was surprised. And in fact, she was in Egypt. And he said, oh, I remember, I had to see her a week early so she could get her treatment. And she texted me back, she said, oh, I'm gone for three weeks, because I need to be back for my treatment in four weeks. So this is what this is about, really freedom of injections and finding ways to improve the standard of care globally. Uh, of course, in many parts of the world, patients are not treated because there's not an ability to treat frequently with anti-VEGF, which is the standard of care today. Thank you. Thank you.